Jimbooey, Jimbooey, he was a bold, adventurous man. Jimbooey, Jimbooey, battled for right with a powerful hand. His blade was tempered and so was he. Indestructible steel was he. Jimbooey, Jimbooey, he was a fighter, a fearless and mighty adventurous man. He roamed the wilderness unafraid from Natchez to Rio Grande. With all the might of his gleaming blade, he fought for the rights of man. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie, he was a fighter, a fearless and mighty adventurer and man. Morning, Mr. Bowie. Morning, Eli. A horse ready? Yes, sir, right around the side. Grained and watered? Yes, sir. Take you clear to New Orleans without a stop. Thank you, Eli. To reach New Orleans without a stop was exactly what I had in mind. There was a certain lady there waiting for me to take her to the opera ball that night. Please, sir, please! Oh. Did you see that? What, sir? The girl in that carriage. She seemed frightened. Did you hear a call out? I didn't notice anything out of the usual, Mr. Bowen. You know, Eli, sometimes kind of hard to mind your own business. Especially when somebody else's business is a pretty girl. Yeah, I guess so, Mr. Bowie. Yeah. As I jogged along on my way to New Orleans, I finally convinced myself there was nothing unusual about that incident in the coach. Just an ordinary quarrel between a headstrong girl and her parents. Then, as I began to turn my mind to the anticipated pleasures of Annabelle and the opera ball, there occurred another of those unpredictable incidents of the road. Afternoon, ladies. You having a little trouble? And what does it look like, if not trouble? If only, gosh, monsieur, it has failed us. Failed us indeed, and just when it was needed most. Well, can I uh, be of any help? Oh, how kind of you, monsieur. Would you please? Uh, if you feel you could be of any assistance, it would not be unappreciated. We, oui, monsieur, to be swiftly on our way is of the gravest importance. I'm sure it is. Let's have a look. Well, if uh, you ladies can manage the wheel, I'll lift the cart and then you uh, slip the wheel on the axle. Oui, monsieur. Lift when ready, sir. Ready? Uh. Push, 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 Good. Uh, just one thing, ladies, before you go. How are you going to keep the wheel on? Pardon, monsieur? There's no nut to keep the wheel on. That's why it came off. A nut? A bit of metal with a threaded hole, mademoiselle. So? So it screws onto the axle to hold the wheel on. Chances are the nut fell off back the road a piece. Uh, it is necessary that we have this nut? Well, without it, the wheel's going to come off the next bend you come to. I'll have a look. You have found it? No, piece of wood. Oh, oh if only I had not permitted Marilou to leave with that woman. But she said she was Marilou's son, monsieur, so why should I have doubted her? Mary Lou? One of our pupils at uh, Miss Peabody's Select Female Academy on Charter Street. You must know of it, monsieur. The Select Female Academy? I know it slightly. The young ladies there are so, uh, are so young. Oh, I, monsieur, I'm, I'm so worried. Miss Peabody has every right to send me back to France in dishonor and disgrace. Do you think she would do that, monsieur? Did she bring you over here? Yes, to teach the Select Females the pure Parisian accent. Oh. Oh, but she's such a strong woman with such a control over the emotion. I cannot tell if she will forgive me or not. So you see, we must find Marie Lou, do you not, monsieur? Yeah, yeah, I'm beginning to. It, it is so important in so many ways, such as the uh, handsome contribution Colonel Carter has promised to make to the Academy. Colonel Carter? Yeah, Ma Marie Lou's papa. Uh -huh. Oh, he is very rich. And Miss Peabody is so desirous of enlarging the school. Oh, but if we do not find her, I'm afraid poor Miss Peabody will never see the handsome contribution. Yeah, yeah, I see. That's bad. 
Yeah, and all because of me, monsieur. All because of my foolish trust in people. Oh, I, I'm doing it again. I, I'm trusting you, a man, an American. Oh, zut, alors, what is happening to me? No, no, mademoiselle. No need to get upset. To have trust in people, it, it is a Christian virtue, is it not, monsieur? Yeah, I guess it is. Up to a point. Why are you telling me all this? I, to, to be honest, monsieur, I, I do not know, except that... Oh, perhaps I thought you might be able to help. You will help, will you not, monsieur? Well, uh, I'd like to help, but uh, you see, uh, I got uh, someone waiting for me in New Orleans. It's a matter of uh, urgent business. Uh, any luck, ma'am? No, sir. And I doubt that the pair of you have had very much either. We were introducing ourselves. Monsieur, may I present Miss Peabody of the Select Female Academy of New Orleans? Uh, Jim Bowie, at your service, Miss Peabody. And just what else have you confided in this total stranger, mademoiselle? Oh, only the uh, reason of our search, Miss Peabody. R really? Well, come along, Angelique. I see no reason for further detaining this young man. But, but uh, what about this small piece of iron with the hole in it? Never mind. Uh, just a minute, uh, ladies. I don't wish to pry into your personal affairs, but I do know you're in a hurry. And I think I can fix your cart, at least uh, well enough to reach the next town. With your permission, of course. We could spend all day looking for this nut and never find it. Permission granted. This girl you're looking for, what's she like? Oh, she's very pretty. She's about to, oh, so tall and uh, flaxen hair and blue eyes. Oh, it's probably not the same one, but uh, she by any chance wearing a blue dress? Oh, but of course, the uniform of the academy. You see now, monsieur. Control yourself, Miss Morrow. And just where did you see this alleged girl? Outside the Black Horse Tavern, about eight miles down the road. She, she was in a carriage? Yeah. With a woman of middle age? That's right. And a, a great tall coachman on the box. Well, I didn't notice the coachman, mademoiselle, just the select female. Oh. Uh, this young lady, uh, what happened? An abduction? Oh, no, monsieur. An elopement. Oh. Marie-Lou is in love with Emile Dussard. Oh, he's such a charming young man. Into the cart at once, mademoiselle. Oh, thank you again for your generous assistance, sir. Uh, don't mention it, Miss Peabody. This uh, tavern, monsieur, would it be... Uh, do you think you could show us this tavern? Oh, well, uh, I guess I could, yes. But naturally, but, uh, I would reimburse you for your loss of time. No, ma'am, it's not that. It's just that, uh, see, in this deal I'm working on, uh, I got a lot of competition. In fact, uh, if I don't get there on time, I'm, <laughs> I'm liable to lose out entirely. <laughs> you can't miss it, ladies. Straight down the road, Black Horse Tavern. Ask for a boy named Eli. Thank you, sir, again. Yes. Au revoir, monsieur. I will remember you in my prayers. Oh, thank you, mademoiselle. I hurried again on my way to New Orleans, trying to keep in mind the charms of the lovely Annabelle, who'd soon be in my arms at the opera ball. It was about an hour later when I noticed something lying on the road. Ordinarily, I'd have ridden on, but this time... The book proved to be a missile or prayer book that's used to follow religious services. The inscription on the flyleaf was in French. Roughly translated, it read, For my beloved daughter Angelique, from her loving mother. No, sir, I told myself. I'm not going chasing after those select females. I got a select female of my own waiting for me. I'm not staying, Eli. Just want some information. I'm looking for the two schoolmarms who stopped by here this afternoon. 
School moms? Oh, I didn't see any school moms, Mr. Bowie. Sir? You're lying, boy. Just like you were lying this morning about that girl in the coach. Now, come on, let's have some truth. Two ladies in a pony cart. Where are they? Uh, up by Spanish Creek, I guess. Spanish Creek? Did you send them there? Yes, sir. Why? Well, I was looking for a girl, and I figured that's where she is. All right, let's hear it all. A friend of mine come here the other night, and he wanted to know if I knew anybody that could help him get this girl. Get her? Yeah, uh, some place her old man was keeping her prisoner in. Was your friend named Emile? Yeah, yes, sir. Emile Dussard. Do you know him? I heard of him. Did he rescue her? Well, that's what I don't know, Mr. Bowie. And it's got me kind of scared. You see, I got these friends from Spanish Creek to help Emile, but I ain't seen them since. They're the ones that drove off this morning in the coach. Name of uh, Odin. All right, Eli. If you're telling me yarns, you better not be here when I get back. Do you understand? Good afternoon, ma'am. I'm looking for the two ladies from the Select Female Academy. Would you tell them that Jim Boy's waiting to see them, please? You must have mistaken the place, monsieur. Sorry. Good day. No, I haven't mistaken the place, ma'am. That's their pony cart back there. I must ask you to leave, monsieur. Not until I look inside, ma'am. Jim Boy, the man who fixed your pony cart. Monsieur. Oh, Mr. Bowie, how wonderful. You've come to rescue us. That was a general idea. But right now, I could use a little rescuing myself. You stand back away from the door. I should not be so curious, another of my miserable sins. Well, that's not just a bad sin. Oh, do not waste sympathy on me, monsieur. Others need it more. Miss Peabody and Marie Lou. She's here, the girl? Oui. Oh, I saw her but briefly when we arrived. She and her sweetheart, Emile. I thought you said this was an elopement. Why are they holding you ladies and me? It is beyond my comprehending, monsieur. 
I have a feeling it is even beyond the comprehending of Marie-Lou and Emile. Hmm. It has just occurred to me, how is it uh, you are here? Oh, I was forgetting. Yeah, they took my money and my knives, but they didn't take this. Mine? It's got your name inside, from your mother. I figured it might be valuable to you. It is mine. But where would you find these? On the road, just after I left you. Kind of lucky I was the one who found it, huh? Ah, uh, lucky? Uh, no, 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 monsieur. This is not lucky. This is no accident. This is by the hand of the bon Dieu himself. It is a miracle. Well, I wouldn't... Uh... Oh, no, no. There's no doubt about it, monsieur. It is truly a miracle. What we need now is another one to get us all out of here. Of you, monsieur. You may set it here. Mademoiselle, turn your back. He has fainted, monsieur? That's right. Well, when he wakes up, he will cry out, no? Yeah, I'll rip my shirt. Oh, no, 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 monsieur, not the shirt. You, you cannot spare him. I'll have to gag him. Wait. Uh, turn your back, monsieur. Monsieur, if this is not sufficient, I have a further supply. This will be sufficient. Thank you, Angie. Uh, what did you call me, monsieur? Angie. Angelique, it's just a little long, don't you think? Do you mind? Oh, no, I, I like it. You can call me Jim. Oh, I, I like that too, Jim. <laughs> For the last time, madam, take that pen and write what I tell you. Hmm? Do your worst, you scoundrel. You shall not make me a part of this odious plot. Right. Never. Do what he wants, Miss Peabody. And who are you to be giving advice, young man? You who got us all into this. That's done now. The important thing is to get you ladies safely home. Write what he asks. I shall write no lies for this felonious criminal. Your final word, madame? My final word. Fetch the girl. Mary Lou. Oh, Mrs. Peabody, ma'am. I'm so frightened. Dry your tears, Miss Carter. Our fate is in the hands of Providence. Please sit down, Miss Peabody. Do you see that? <laughs> A vulgar exhibition of bad taste. It has been there for more than 20 years, madame. Indelible. Impossible to remove. Tattooed there with ink, forever. With ink like this. Should I tattoo the message on the beautiful face of this girl, madame? Or do you prefer to write what I shall tell you to write? Write, Miss Peabody. You have no choice. Write exactly what I say. My dear Colonel Carter, If you wish to see your daughter alive, you will send me the sum of $10,000. Which sum will be delivered by...
enemies. As I often say to my young ladies, there is nothing quite so salubrious as brisk physical exercise. It was fine while it lasted. Oh, Zitalo, that I should have come in late and missed the best part. Oh! More self-control, Miss Morrow, if you please. Allow me to introduce myself, monsieur. I know all about you, Emil. I'm Jim Boyd. Well, we better get these fellas tied up while they're still out cold. Get those ropes. Uh, what are your plans for these criminals, Mr. Bowie? Oh, uh, have them jailed for abduction, extortion, and robbery. Splendid. And I shall be there to testify against them. But will it not be in all the newspapers? Naturally. It will be an object lesson to all other criminals. But what will it be to Marilou's papa? Oh, he will be most angry, not only with her, but with Miss Peabody's Select Female Academy. What of the handsome contribution? Uh, <coughs> On second thought, Mr. Bowie, perhaps it would not be wise to bring these men into court. Could we not give them their just desserts in some other fashion? Let me worry about that, ma'am. There'll be no scandal. Thank you, sir. And there will be no more of that, young man. Not while this young lady is in my charge. What you do later does not concern me. Out with you now and harness the pony to the cart. Uh, my cape and prayer book, Emile. And this time, Miss Moreau, you will not let her out of your sight until we are safely home. Hurry along now. Au revoir, Jean. May le bon Dieu bless you always. Goodbye, Angie. Angie? Jim? Oh, we kind of got acquainted. We were locked up together. I do not approve of the use of nicknames. Good day to you, Mr. Bowie. Good day, Miss Peabody. Once more, I hurried on my way to Annabelle and the Opera Ball after dumping the prisoners on a steamboat bound for Natchez under the hill. Must have been just about sundown when I rounded a bend a few miles out of New Orleans, and there... Jean! Oh, if you but knew how I was praying for your reappearance. Is it not so, Miss Carter? Did I not ask you to pray also? I do so regret delaying you again, Mr. Bowie. Was there not an urgent matter of business requiring your presence in New Orleans? Well, the fact is, I was taking a young lady to the opera ball tonight. But I'm so late now, I guess she's made other arrangements. And, Miss Peabody, may I remind you, you still have to get a nut. A nut? Into the cart, Mary Lou. You too, Angelique. I'm so sorry, Jean. If there were only some way I could make it up to you. Whoa, now. You just said something there. Yeah. Uh, Miss Peabody, I'd like the honor and privilege of escorting uh, Mademoiselle Angelique to the Opera Ball tonight. With your permission, of course. Uh, well, we're both in your debt, to be sure, Mr. Bowie, but I'm afraid. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you kindly. Young man! Isn't he just the most divine thing ever? And here's the star of our show, Scott Forbes. Hello, everyone. Hope you enjoyed tonight's show. And we'll be with us next week for another exciting adventure in the life of Jim Bowie. Jim Bowie, he roamed the wilderness unafraid from Natchez to Rio Grande. With all the might of his gleaming blade, he fought for the rights of man. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie, he was a bold adventuring man. 
Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie, in battle for rights with a powerful hand. His blade was tempered and so was he. Indestructible steel was he, Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie. He was a fighter, a fearless and mighty adventuring man.